So just while people are getting ready, I just want to welcome, and it's, it's a little bit, just, just take your time to, to, get your, to get your computers up if you need. I'm not even going to open mine. I'm just going to embrace uh, the information on the PowerPoints and the handouts. But again, we have a committee of the whole meeting right now, and it's Tuesday, January 28th at 4.35 or so. Again, just take a minute while our consultants get themselves ready and they take a breath. They've been working hard all day and I just want to make sure that we're set. I'm not, you know, I don't want to delay the start of our meeting, but I also know that there is, um, you know, just a need to kind of be a little flexible, especially while I look for my, my handouts now that I'm here. That it was more important, really, to, I know that I have. Just the agenda, because I don't want to open up my... I know that our first... Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order, and then, um, Member Oswald, if you'll take roll. Certainly. Member Dirk Eater. Here. Member Kirby. Here. Member Loeffler Kemp. Here. Member Lofald. Chair Lofald, sorry. Here. Member Oswald, that's me. I'm here. Member Sandholm. Here. Member Trinka. Superintendent Grandseth is around here somewhere. I'm sure he'll He's be excused. back. He's not. Oh, okay. Never mind. He's excused. <laughs> Assistant Superintendent Horton. Here. Um, Deputy Clerk Erickson. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> and Melinda Thibault. Secretary Melinda Thibault is excused. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Representative Mtiaz. Mtiaz. MTS. I was saying her last name. So, <laughs> MTS. Okay, thank you very much. And Phoenix is excused. So, no. quorum is here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Clerk Oswald. And so, um, the reason we're here today is uh, yesterday was a busy day, and um, it was our uh, superintendent search focus day and community walk in um, opportunities. So um, we're at that stage in our process where we have asked for communities to come and share with us um, what they would like to see in the next leader. This has certainly been a, an incredible, uplifting, um, excited t t um, process. And so we are you know, really, really appreciative of BWP and our consultants, um, Nick Wall and Kathleen Williams. And um, I'm going to turn this over to you so that you can share with us, you know, all that you have gathered. So, um, you know, what, what, one of the things we'll do is we'll, we'll ask questions organically as they come up. Is that okay? I didn't check that out. You know, if there are things that you want them to um, ask, just turn your mic on and I'll call on you. And we'll let those questions kind of, you know, um, come when they need to come. Otherwise, sometimes if you're like me, I will have a question and I, I, it will leave me before the chance comes. So turn your mic on and we'll answer questions kind of as they come. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Kathleen and I are excited to be here. Um, before we get into the stuff, we just want to let you know, the board and the community, how much we enjoyed our day yesterday. We had the pleasure of meeting with 14 different groups over the day, capped off with a a community engagement opportunity open forum with your community and uh, we enjoyed it we enjoyed being uh, in your district around your district the sites of your district Jill and Elena were great hostess and we thank both of you for taking care of us yesterday very kind and um, that goes a long way so we appreciate you and your community I'm gonna unpack what we did and this is a community engagement report and we are finding a leader for your future and Kathleen and I, again, are just so pleased to bring this report to you, talk about ISD 709 Duluth Public Schools today. And what we want to do is just kind of set the table. The documents you have in front of you, just for clarity, you have a hard copy of the slide deck PowerPoint that we're going to look at today for notes. You have a copy, a full copy of the survey with all the other comments from your community. And just to, to draw attention, if there's an other comment, that means an individual said it. But we captured all that information because we felt it was important for your community to know that this information has been seen and heard. In addition, 
you have a stakeholder interview report summary that's from the 14 meetings we had yesterday in your community so just a plethora of knowledge about your district from your people and then the objectives going into this as we talked to you the first time identified the perceived strengths and challenges of Duluth ISD 709 more than just identifying qualities of the next superintendent which are very important but strength and challenges because it twofold as we told the groups yesterday that gives you the board a significant amount of information about your district from your stakeholders it also gives Kathleen and I a tremendous asset as we talk to candidates about Duluth ISD 709 because candidates that we will talk to will ask those questions what are the strengths of Duluth what are the challenges tell us about this district and this gives us a significant amount of current up-to-date information from your stakeholders about the district also in this objective identified desired qualities and characteristics the next super, superintendent should possess and demonstrate other objective build community and understanding and support of the search process it gave us an opportunity to talk to your stakeholders your parents your teachers your principals your system principals uh, your community leaders your elected officials about what are we doing here talk about the process so they're up on it and ensure the broadest possible community participation in the superintendent search process and we'll go over that in relationship to the participation on survey and participation that we had yesterday so there's the objectives we started with and we feel like we're right on schedule we met with the employees these are these are the structure of the engagement at, at engagement activities yesterday 14 meetings and I, as I said we had employees students parents elected officials community leaders in addition to the community forum at the end of the day um, which was a tremendous dialogue and opportunity over 200 people participated in the conversations yesterday we had 14,087 1400 14 thank you <laughs> a lot 1487 <laughs> respondents which is a significant response to the online survey based upon other searches we've done that's you have an engaged community and that's that's fantastic the leadership profile that we'll get into here in just a little bit again as we talked about in the beginning with you describes desired characteristics and experiences of your next superintendent based on stakeholder data from interviews focus groups and online survey used to screen applicants to determine a match we're looking for a fit a match for ISD 709 for the next superintendent to meet the needs that we have identified and you've identified provides guidance to you the board and us the search firm selecting the new superintendent as I said we use this as we screen candidates to look for that fit and that'll be guidance to you when we present the slate of candidates to you as well so it's twofold and this goes back to the reports we have in front of you again um, they're all in your inbox too I understand so if you're an electronic saver which I am that's where they're at we want to make sure you have that opportunity too you have responses from those people who attended meetings forums and gave written input and they were reviewed by the team so we had some people at the forums that wanted to write responses those comments are included in your packet from yesterday Kathleen was meticulous about getting that in the right spot in the right context with the right narrative so she is very detail oriented and that's good we've got a yin and yang here I have different things that's my thing <laughs> and that's a good thing comments from the school and community were gathered and themes and priorities were developed from this input as we go through the slide deck we're going to look at the real high items from the survey priority items in addition to we're, we have a grouping of strengths and a grouping of challenges those are the themes but please know and I want you and your community we want your community to know and you know all the stuff in your reports unfiltered this is straight information we're gonna we're gonna do in this report today highlights and themes you have it all you have all the information we've not filtered any of that out I think that's important for you and your community to know we feel very compelled that in the spirit of transparency we need to start that here and we have 
So the following slides will provide highlights of the themes and priorities, but again, to restate it, you have the whole process there. The reports generated, you have all three. Community survey report, community stakeholder engagement report, and the consultant summary report, which we're gonna go over right now. So back when I was a teacher in middle school and high school, I always wanted to make sure the class knew everything they had. I was not one of those teachers that wanted mystery curriculum. So <laughs> we all had them, let's be honest. So we got everything in front of us and we hope you know, we're ready to go. These were the three guiding questions yesterday in our stakeholder groups. We wanted it to be consistent so that each group had the opportunity to talk to us about the strengths of Duluth ISD 709, the challenges on the road ahead, and what qualities and characteristics will the next superintendent need to possess and demonstrate to be successful. So we're going to go through those at this time. From the survey, top three strengths of Duluth, ISD 709, excellent teachers and staff, 67.8%. And we heard it in every group. This is from the survey now. Good school facilities, 42 and a half. Supportive community, 40.4%. Three most important issues facing ISD 709 in the next five years. Financial management's the top one. Achievement and opportunity gap. Again, we heard these all day. And community relations. So those were the survey top three strengths and challenges. As we, as we segue into the superintendent qualities, the top skills, communication, financial, collaboration. And then going along with that, characteristics, integrity, commitment to the community, and a strategic thinker. Can you, Nick, can you, um, can you just tell, tell us what a collaborative, is it a collaborative thinker? Collaboration skills. Can you give us an example of superintendents and where that collaborative well, skill? I'll do that. So, Collaboration means um, that you're working with other individuals, generally um, the people closest to, um, that has the greatest expertise or is going to be impacted by a decision. So for example, if you're going to choose um, your mathematics curriculum, it's critically important to collaborate with those people closest to the decision, and that would certainly be math teachers who have the expertise to know, your curriculum director. Um, you may want to have uh, your assessment coordinator there to say, here are some areas we need to grow in. How is this curriculum going <coughs> to match? And you're working together for a common end. Um, when most people, for example, do strategic direction setting, uh, you want the whole community to be engaged somehow. So you're collaborating with them, um, agreeing on interests, exploring options to get there, and from that, you're working with the people that are going to make it happen at your central office. All different levels of working with people for that common end or goal that you have. <coughs> Which then establish a relationship um, climate and meaningfully listening to those and seeing that they're heard, seeing that there's follow through. And as Kathleen said, you bring the people to the table that have the skill set and actually empower them to do the work in a meaningful way. Um, You're welcome. Then we did highlighting strengths of the district. This is a conglomerate of what we heard yesterday and conversations we've had and just some things that in the surveys as well because we list the top three. Um, but again, great students, teachers, principals. 
excellent facilities, a uh, positive relationship, and access to two and four year post secondary institutions in Duluth, Greater Duluth, supportive community that supports education. So often yesterday we heard if, if there's a need, the community is going to step up and fill that need. And you all have seen that and experienced that. Uh, local uh, Equity Alliance Group in Duluth addressing and posed, poised to work with district on important equity work. They're ready. Extracurricular opportunities for students. Students up to, oh, I'm going to pause it. The students were a joy. I mean, Kathleen and I just, that, that's highlight of the day. Nothing against anybody else. But to sit there and spend time with the kids and literally listen to them uh, in a meaningful way was because they're going to tell you and in a candid respectful way um, just a joy being at both high schools community organizations assist those that are underserved and in need of assistance that was a theme we heard all day yesterday from helping the homeless community to the underserved your community mm -hmm. fills that void which is impressive Challenge and challenges. This was a theme, the boundary changes being reviewed. That was definitely the, the top challenge that, that you're, you're all facing as a community and as a, as a, as a board. Um, no strategic direction with a plan associated with it. That was definitely something that was throughout the day. Lack of transparency. Lack of engaging people who are going to be impacted by the specific decisions. Resources and equitable distribution of funds. And the historic perceived and real differences, East, First, West, Duluth. Providing students of color with equity of opportunity and access to all programs. Opportunity gaps resulting in disparate outcomes. Um, that was unfortunately a theme as well in the challenges. More cultural diversity within staff to look more like the student population. Staff morale is a need of support from district administration, need for building administrative support as well. I mean, support the principals too. Uh, challenge communication from district to schools and community is a challenge. Consistency and visibility of leadership in buildings and community. And then the inability to sell the Central High School site. Those are challenges. That highlights, again, we couldn't list them all. You got them all there. And, and how many people thought that? Um, as we said to all the groups yesterday, having a say is different than having a vote. We offered opportunity for... A lot of people to have a say and, and get their information out because it's valuable information. Um, but at the end of the day, we're providing it to you to foster and facilitate and, and fine tune the decision making um, for your next superintendent. And to be candid, this really sets the table if you so choose to look at a strategic action plan connected to metrics, connected to tactics, connected to, you know, your legacy as a board and the new superintendent. This is a plethora of information that comes back to leadership on this fine district. This leads into a significant part of the work, but it is something we want to review with you tonight. Uh, the leadership profile. This comes to you after we're survey, reviewing survey data, which we saw the top six qualities, three leadership and characteristics. Organizing the responses from the engaged meetings and forums yesterday. Uh, we, dra we have drafted a description for you to consider. We considered a draft. We'd like for you to kick the tires a little bit and let us know if that's something you can give us direction to post with the posting so that fine tunes the candidate's interest in the uh, position and fine tunes our conversations with them as well. So we pre present this tonight, you to the board, as a draft let you absorb a little bit, talk about it, and then we'd like for your direction to post it. 
Okay. A courageous leader who makes decisions with integrity and consistency with an emphasis on collaborating with the school and community. A leader who has demonstrated a demonstrated track record of valuing a commitment to the community that they are serving. An individual that is a strategic thinker and can demonstrate this in their actions and achievements as a leader. A leader with a school finance acumen and clear measures of this knowledge in their past practice. You'll see a theme here. We, we not only want to talk about you know, philosophical pieces, but we are going to look at proven track record, past practice, achievements. So we want you to know that as a board. This is just not about somebody saying, hey, you know what, I really am a courageous leader. <laughs> okay. You know, it's kind of like the old Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? We want to see substance. So when we um, vet candidates, we will be asking them and then looking for them to show us evidence of this part of their leadership, um, not just their profile, but their practice. A champion of equity of opportunity and access for all students and can cite work CIT. that supports this important work. This includes, but is not limited to, racial equality, cultural competence, social justice, and restorative practice. Individual that has demonstrated the ability to communicate effectively in writing, public, present public presentation, and one-on-one -on -one conversations. There was a the definite theme yesterday about communication, not just from all the groups, from your union leaders to your principals to your students to your elected officials, the value of communication in, in a variety of forms, not to discount the value of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. An individual that leads with humility and demonstrates a student-centered approach to decision-making. An ethical leader who is sincere, dedicated, and engaged, and visible in the school and community. A relationship builder who is a good listener that gets input from others, is accountable, exercises good judgment, approachable, trust builder, and will listen and values the student voice. Um, we had a lot of discussion yesterday, not with, only with students, but with teachers and union leaders about the value of, and the gift that you have here of your kids. You know, th the top asset. So that voice needs to be listened to and represented. And we need to find you a leader that actually has done that. A leader with knowledge of the history of Duluth ISD 709 and understanding of the unique challenges and will reach out to the marginalized population. Populations, excuse me, plural. A team builder with a demonstrated record of building an effective team that can get the job done with excellence and accountability. Your principal team had some, some strong um, interest in team and team building, and they're looking forward to continuing to grow that, that team process. Okay, I must, I'm going to pause here, so if that's okay. I want you to know the that we did do these in somewhat of rank order. The top six are correlated to the top qualities that came out of the survey and that Kathleen and I gleaned in the conversations yesterday. So there is somewhat of an interest and those would be the top ones we look for. Um, in a perfect world, we find all those qualities. But I want you to know, we want you to know as a board, those were really the top six as reflected in the surveys and uh, the conversations yesterday. Sally. Thank you. I have a couple of questions and comments, and if I'm going too far into this, feel free to say pump the brakes, Trinka, and we'll get back to that. Um, first of all, on, and thank you for clarifying that the, um, that the top six are 
really derive from the combination of the survey and the focus groups. That's helpful for us. Um, and if that's the case, and based on the survey results, I'm curious if the word school finance, if the word acumen in that fourth bullet is strong enough. Um, I really, I believe so strongly in our finance team. Um, but you know, I was talking about this with colleagues today. We don't have as deep of a bench as I think the public might think that we do. I would love to have 14 Kathys. Um, but I think that, and Peggy's, and the whole finance team. Um, so I'm wondering if, if acumen is a strong enough word. Um, and then my other question kind of talks, or is asking you, Nick, um, as an expert around equity, if that fifth bullet should include a, a, a listing of socioeconomic disparities. Because I think that, um, you know, when I looked at the survey results, there were like 46% of people had students who received free and reduced lunch. And I think that um, as we break down other data, that's a significant contributor as we look at um, disparities in reading rates and in math test scores, for example. And so wanting, wondering if, because we know that that's a driver in addition to race and ethnicity, if we want to call that out, or if you feel comfortable, again, based on your expertise, that we have that, if that's We, we can here. easily add that, and, and low income is, is definitely a driver of inequities. I wanted to put, but it's not limited to, but this can easily be, that, this is a draft conversation, we appreciate it. And the acumen can be stronger too. We want to definitely find that, that the individual that we seek has practiced school finance in a way that we can, as demonstrated, they balance budgets. They're able to not, you know, spend and then cut staff and cut resources. That kind of exper experiential practice. But we can easily tweak that. I just also want to clarify, um, under the please indicate if any of the following applies to you or a district ISD 709 student in your care. When you quoted 41.4%, that's of the 408 people that were able to respond. Thank you. I appreciate that clarification. And, and the reason I know that yeah. is because when I looked at received special education services and I saw 71.1%, I went, what? And then I realized of the people who answered this, which it's targeted at the groups that you see listed. So sure. just for a matter of clarity, it's not your whole population. Thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate it. But we do know it's a sign it, there's a large percentage of students in our district who receive free and reduced lunch. So That's easily tweaked. And, and from my equity work, low income does present inequities. It's a, it's a group that is, needs targeted intentional assistance. <clears throat> can easily be remedied. Just feel free to turn your mic on. Um, <clears throat> I like to turn my mic off and then cough and do it immediately. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, in this, I'm, I'm really happy to see um, how these qualities and characteristics play out, but the, the other thing that it just occurred to me is um, when we think about decision-making processes, they also, they have to be student-centered and they have to be data-driven. So is, I, I also would like to see a characteristic, and I think many people in the community also would like to see the characteristic of a superintendent that can have the student-centered approach, but then also can come to data and be able to use it um, to make decisions. So, and that was embedded in, in a demonstrated way, but being more specific is not a problem. Yeah, um, thank you again. I, in your draft uh, leadership profile, you used five times demonstrated, uh, track record demonstrated in their actions, demonstrated in their ability to communicate, demonstrated in student-centered, demonstrated in wrecking record of building an effective leadership and uh, I'm really glad to see that that's something that was important to me I'm just uh, curious if you want to elaborate a little bit on um, how that showed up in the conversations you had or in the surveys and um, how you see that yes being measured um, yeah. the, the conversations it was very clear with with um, 
almost every stakeholder group that they wanted to make sure that we didn't just get someone who wanted to be philosophical about the job being superintendent. And I heard it loud and clear. That's coupled with the fact that Kathleen and I are former practitioners and uh, our BS detectors are pretty active when we hear <laughs> stories from those that are in the field. So we, we ask the second question uh, as opposed to just the first question. When someone tells us about their leadership style or what they do, we ask, okay, give me evidence of how you did that. What did you do? Those candidates that really understand that will, will, will be providing that to us on the front end. Um, and as we all know, standing superintendents and those that are working have evidence on their site, um, many times on their school site, and many times on their LinkedIn site, so that we can search that out. So um, it's something that we will drive very hard as our decision making as we look at that. And uh, we, I heard it, we heard it loud and clear yesterday. They really wanted to know, well, make sure that you guys know that these people actually did this and didn't just talk about it. Yeah, it, it, it was clear they want the real deal, not a great interviewer. And so, for example, I just flipped the page open in the very, one of the fir very first qualities, proven history of engaging the community. So uh, I was a big engager of the community, and it's very easy for me to say, give me some examples of how you did this. And um, I, I would very easily be able to say um, I met with every possible group within the first two months I was there to introduce myself and get to know who they were. I uh, eventually became a board of directors member on the Chamber of Commerce to engage the business and manufacturing community who didn't think we were listening to them. And the candidates should be able to give very concrete, specific information. I walked through every single classroom <coughs> in every single school, of which we had over 20, to introduce myself to every single staff member I was engaging. And I can roll things off like that, and candidates should be able to do that, too. Member Oswald. Thank you. Um, I, I want to reemphasize um, Member Trinka's thoughts about socioeconomic status, as that affects um, a, lo a large portion of of certain schools. That we we have significant um, socioeconomic disparities in certain schools, and so we want to make sure that that we can treat those schools equitably too. Um, the question I have is in bullet two when you talk about um, valuing. Uh, having a leader that's valuing a commitment to the community, I'm not sure at what what commitment means in that aspect. Are you talking about a commitment to staying here and persevering, or are you talking about a commitment to just be invested in that leave? Um, and so well, how does that roll out? What we heard was they want somebody to stay. Now, that's tricky. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you why it's tricky. Because you can pick a really great candidate Boards of education change. You all are going to be selecting the next person, and there might be a wave of resignation or changes where there's a very different mindset of what they want. That board dynamic can change. That's one thing. Um, I am not going to mince words. I am going to tell you this is going to be a very challenging job, particularly when you have over 50 years of history of a community that was developed the way it was um, with certain populations here <coughs> and certain populations there. I mean, one person isn't going to be able to do this single-handedly and is going to have to be working I am really working with all of your community members, but with that being said, this individual is going to need to be supported. So if, if you, however we tweak this and you approve it, you are saying this is what you want. And when somebody comes in to perform the job, you as a board need to support them, the communities need to support them, teachers, the whole bailiwick. 
People need to help this person. Otherwise, they're, go they're going to feel, if you feel unsupported and your efforts aren't moving forward in the way you said you wanted them, uh, people move on. People move on. So it's tricky. I get that they want people to stay, but at the same time, you have to be as welcoming and supportive as you can to keep them there. Because it's their home, too. Just FYI. Um, I just wanted to make sure that um, that you know when you're, when you're reading this that I think, from my point of view, a better term might be we're not looking for a, a fixer, like someone to come in and fix us and leave, but we're looking for someone that, that truly cares about us. No, I don't. I, that never okay. came through no. uh, at Good. all. Thank you. You know, not at all. <laughs> no. Quite the contrary. No. We want somebody that loves us, sticks with us, stays with us. If they, if this happens to be an individual that has <coughs> children, that they bring them into our schools, the whole shebang. I, I guess on the same vein, just so that we're being realistic as well, is that I, I think it's been said often that the average life of a superintendent in a district is often six years um, or so, you know. The national, or, uh, just wait, national I, average is 2.7. Okay. okay. So, so, you know, just, you know, I, just so we're all being realistic here and, and that it's out there for the public that uh, we want them to be committed and stay here and we would love them for a time. But the reality is, is uh, that's not the case. Thank you. Thank you for bringing up that point, Member Lefflekamp. I think that's um, really important for all of us to know as we search for our unicorn. Um, <laughs> just a couple of quick comments. I think under the first bullet point, a courageous leader who makes decisions, I think part of courage is in knowing the strength of your staff. And because we're hearing that overwhelmingly, I see part of being a courageous learner or a courageous leader is somebody who delegates effectively and efficiently because we do have such top tier talent here how do we use them to be really good at what they're doing and then this is a little bit more of a this is a question pulling on your experiences from doing searches but also as superintendents this I recognize that a leadership profile looks different to different communities but where how do we set ourselves apart for, I mean, all of these look like really great qualities that we want in a leader of a district. So what is it that you heard and that we can be sure we're weaving into our conversations and the description about why this is an exceptional place for somebody to come? Uh, to echo your point, uh, the, the team builder point, with a demonstrated record of building an effective leadership team that can get the job done with excellence and accountability. That's where it comes into letting your team do the job. But build that team with accountability measures in place. That was something we heard yesterday, too, and, I, and we both value that. But what sets this apart is going to be the unique challenges that the next leader will face. There are going to be leaders not attracted to this position because of the challenges. There are going to be leaders that are attracted to this because that's their strength area. Th that's going to set... Uh, Duluth apart because they're going to want to come and be a part of a district that is looking to chart that next phase of their um, their journey um, the board is primed your community's ready so that's going to be a very attractive piece for the next superintendent here um, and to your point these are different these are different uh, guiding um, leadership qualities than in other searches. Are there commonalities? Sure. Are the top six like this in every district we look at? No, they're not. That's why I want to draw attention to that. These are very important to right here. Um, they're not generic in nature. We pull, if you look at the report, those six are interwoven in the top six here. They're, they're very, very personalized to what we heard and what, what your community said on the on the surveys. So that will guide that and will attract some candidates. It will not attract other candidates, just to be candid. 
There, yeah, because you don't want that fit. We, we don't want to bring that. We want that fit to be both ways. And the strong candidates will be interviewing us and interviewing you when they come to see you as the slate comes in front of you to determine if that fits both ways. Excellent question, though. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're all hope, hoping that we can beat that national average, um, you know, because it would be very disappointing if, you know, we hired a superintendent that's just looking to come in for two years and and move on. Um, back to the top one of the top six, I just was kind of struggling with uh, the end of that statement there in terms of collaborating with the school and the community, should it say, collaborating with the schools or the school schools in the school district in the community it just doesn't seem to sound right to me when it just says collaborating with the school I mean I know that individually a good superintendent is going to collaborate with the team at each individual school but I don't know how, how we best phrase that first, first bullet here collaborating with the schools the school district and individual schools we got a lot of schools and that's why I'm just and yeah. school to We'll correct it. We can tweak that. It's number one. I just thought that might be something to look at. Thanks for bringing that up, uh, Paul. I think uh, that, that, that wasn't reading well for me either, and so I, I think that makes, makes it a little bit different. I had a kind of question, um, you know, as we were – doing research over the last few months um, before even hiring somebody looking at different school districts that did surveys and what were three important skills needed in the next superintendent and characteristics, you know. I, I'm just uh, uh, curious, uh, the three that came up in each of these categories, uh, how common, from your experience, um, uh, were these same traits? Um, or skills um, showing up in and that other districts because I I'm going to go back and look uh, <laughs> to the research I had done because I think they were pretty similar. So just curious. Again, like I said earlier, there's going to be definitely common elements, but not in the ranking order or the percentage of these. And um, these are very specific to exactly what your community said in the survey. Will there be overlap? I would sure think so, uh, but not in the order and not in the percentage that, that your constituents put them in place. Um, sometimes financial skills doesn't make the top. Um, a lot of times I see a knowledge of um, effective instruction, practices, um, curriculum, mm -hmm. uh, because School, um, school achievement is the greatest concern, and it may be <clears throat> not where people want it. Um, so financial skills isn't always up there. Member Trinka? <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> making eyes at the CFO about that one. Um, just recognizing that these are great communication tools to use to communicate with the community as well. Oh, wow, that's a lot of comms and sentences. Um, these percentages that are behind there, I just want to be really clear that these are from the online survey. This, that's not including all that you heard during the focus groups because I think we had some, or is this from everyone? Because we No, these top, or as it says, are search survey results. Yep, I just wanted to clarify. Yes. Okay. Member Eater? Um, would it help when we as we're moving forward through this process, somewhere within this leadership profile, do we as a board need to somehow talk about our commitment to the next superintendent coming in? Because the next superintendent coming in, there are going to be challenges. We all are going to have to be courageous leaders as we move through the next couple years um, for our district. So somewhere in this leadership profile, do we need to speak about a relationship between the superintendent and the board? I just got back from MSBA a couple weeks ago, and I went to a lot of superintendent-themed um, vignettes or whatever you call them. I can't think of it right now. Sessions. I can't, could come up with vignette, but not session. <laughs> there it is. Um, 
do we need to somehow in this profile talk about that board superintendent relationship? Because I heard it time and time and time and time again. When superintendents are successful is when they have a support a supportive board helping them move through these difficult times. Well, your statement is spot on. Um, it just wasn't reflected in the feedback <coughs> that we got. I mean, you cannot have a successful superintendent and or a board without you working together. Um, I always considered myself the ad additional team member who didn't have a vote, but you have to work hand in hand. You just have to. Um, if you want to pr put that there, you can. It just wasn't something that, it doesn't, you know, there are lots of things that aren't on here that we could add, but if you choose as a board to add that, absolutely. Because what I'm worried about is um, that we're going to read through this leadership profile and, abs and absent is the leadership profile as the board. So it's like, okay, soup, go ahead, go out there. We'll just be over here. So in the interest of attracting a kind of superintendent candidate that we want, is it going to be important that we say, yes, we as a board are going to work on supporting you or, or some language that talks about that we realize the importance of that relationship? Okay, a question um, every candidate asks is, so how's the board? Mm -hmm. And it would be nice to say, um, I can tell you very specifically, this is a board that specifically asks us to put this bullet in because they have a high interest in working in a collaborative nature with the superintendent of schools. Yeah, um, I guess on that same vein um, of demonstration and, and track record, uh, can we add something about um, some kind of demonstrated success of working with school boards, just like we're asking demonstrated success of the community? Um, and <coughs> yeah. Sure. I commend both of you for putting that in there as well. I mean, that is a powerful message to the candidates because that will be the first question we get. No, it with, won't be. Uh, be my first one. Just <laughs> it, it'll be right up there. So if you send that message, I commend both of you and the board. If, if that's what you want to do, I think that's impressive. And, and kudos to you. I have a follow-up. Yep, and just my follow-up question, and, and again, without, I, I did look online with what was given to us, but where uh, is the feedback um, from your interviews with us as a board, where did that get captured? So we we um, put those individual interviews along with our 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 community group, right? Yes, we talked about it this morning. Actually, what we did was we um, looked over all of your comments to see if there was something mm -hmm. that didn't, that wasn't already on here in the big report. Is that a comment? I, I just seem to remember when I was reviewing Madison, Wisconsin's, there was a section that had the, uh, and I, I could be wrong, um, I was reading a lot of different school boards, um, that had a section that did reflect uh, the board piece. And I, I'm not wedded to it. I just want to make sure we're being transparent. No, I, we, Nick we and I about talked that. about that at length. Um, I talked to Ms. Lofeld about it because it's always a split whether or not you, um, they were interviews. Um, we have captured very specifically what you responded to us but the thought was you were the survey was going out to your school district community the <clears throat> focus groups were centered 
around your internal and external school community and looking to see what they wanted and then comparing your feedback. Was there anything that you mentioned that was outside what your school and <coughs> your school district and your community wanted? And when um, I talked to Ms. Lofeld, I, excuse me, I said, it's, it's here unless you want specifically a separate generated report, which we did not bring tonight. And my thought was that they, um, they had a lot of data and a lot of work to do from probably early this morning until four this afternoon, and they have the ability to share out our reports if we need them, if we want them for individual school board work and they can go back and, and do that at a later time, mm -hmm. that because the themes that were in our individual were showing up in our other groups, um, except for maybe, I don't know if anyone in our individual shared what Member Eater said <coughs> about um, having in our leadership profile the idea of, of a strong relationship working with the school board as a whole and and that I'm glad came out and we can add that well and what we were looking at overarching themes that most everybody shared so we can certainly address that however however you so choose we just need some guidance on that sure. thank you um, I think Member Eater, your point is, and um, Member Leffler Kemp is really, really well taken. And I think that um, you're right. We need to stand up and show ourselves as courageous leaders. And part of that is being supportive of whomever comes in the door, um, especially because that's one of the top jobs of school boards. So I would like to see us add that. Along with that, I can understand um, from somebody who does focus groups, like the need to put things together um, in short in a short amount of time, but. Because, because it is one of our primary responsibilities as school board members to hire and support a superintendent, I think that from a transparency standpoint, Rosie, I'm really glad that you brought this up, that while we're, I mean, if we're calling out the stakeholder group interview feedback from our diverse communities and from our high school students and from our labor, um, our labor relations community, that it's really important that our community see that our priorities are coming from what we're hearing from them, as well as we're putting our money where our mouth is as leaders to say, what we shared with you in a confidential interview, we're completely comfortable in sharing with the community. So I think I would like, um, and I, I'm glad that, that um, it sounds like a lot of what we shared with you is in lockstep with the community, which I think is great, but I think this is an opportunity for us to show that to the community as well. So I would like to see us, um, that information provided um, in this list with the other stakeholder interviews. As Kathleen said, just give us direction. We'll yeah, do it. We, we Whatever the, it's the, we work at the pleasure of the board. <laughs> You know, again, um, I'm just remembering this from uh, when I reviewed Madison uh, way back a few months ago now that I just remember seeing it out there on the website. So it was available. Yeah. Um, it is not any problem getting it to you because it's, it's poised and ready to go if, if all of you agree. We just need group decision. I think it sounds like we mm -hmm. would like the microphone, Chair uh, Oswald. Thank you, Member Oswald. I was just reminding you to turn on your microphone while you were talking. That's oh, all. Okay. Sorry. So we're going to give direction to BWP to list our our interview points, but not by name. I would think just a, a running, yeah, 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 a running list of the strengths, the challenges the qualities we want to see. Um, I apologize, I um, took that, that direction. I mean, Kathleen and Nick called me this morning and um, I reached out to MSBA to see if someone could just give me some guidelines on what that would be like. Um, and, um, you know, 
they they thought that if the themes were there, I mean, I, I just, yeah, I think it's great that they'll, they'll be able to do it. Kathleen said they could do it if we want it, and we want it. So what I'm hearing too, Member Oswald. Thank you. Um, I have no problem with with that either. That's that's great. Um, the, I know that um, most candidates will be Googling us and uh, looking up our past and that sort of thing. And I just think that our statement of we're a board that really wants to work together with our superintendent would be absolutely vital at this point to counter a lot of, of contentious past that isn't the reality now. And so I think that's that would be super important to realize that we have we have moved on and we have we're um, we work together well. And I think that that would speak volumes because there you will probably get a lot of questions about things that they find out from way before uh, us. If if a candidate does due diligence, you bet we will. Mm -hmm. So I'm just if, oh, Nick. Are you go ahead, Jill. I was just going to capture the yep, the, the, that's what I was gonna do, so you the edits. In the first, then, we'll add school district and schools to the first bullet point. And then acumen, uh, what, would, what kind of word, what stronger word would you like? Because we're going to look at past practice, but what would you like? Go ahead. That's well, I just shared something with Sally that, you know, I mean, again, I, I think we'd like to have a superintendent that has a good understanding of uh, Minnesota school finances which can be unique compared to other states so I don't right, know. Right that's the message we can add Somehow Minnesota in there fold that in Thanks um, I think I appreciate Paul's point I don't think that it needs to be I don't I think that if somebody has a proven track record of, um, of strong financial achievement or experience, um, they'll be able to learn the Minnesota, the relevant Minnesota finance law, especially when we have great teachers. Um, I had another point on that, Paul, too. Um, so I don't want that to, ex I wouldn't want that to exclude someone, especially because I think, and I shared this with um, you, Nick, on our um, on our interview is that I think it's really, I think it would be really great if we could get somebody who has experience working in other communities that are outside of Minnesota because I think, um, I know that our current superintendent is very involved in superintendent groups and I think that's fantastic. Um, but I think that we know that there's a lot of really cool innovative work in communities similar to ours that is happening in different places. So I wouldn't want it to exclude somebody. So I think it's almost their ability to learn quickly Minnesota finance Kathy's like quickly yeah um, but so I would say in in terms of acumen I don't know if expertise or ex um, I, I guess I don't know what you guys write job descriptions more often but just something stronger than acumen um, well, expertise. expertise sounds good to me you good with that and Whoops. take out the Minnesota yeah I, I guess I don't believe Minnesota needs to be in there but you know somehow it's you want someone that has that skill set that as one of their you know top uh, talents it's one of the top six for sure yes on both as Kathleen said not all districts have that in their top six but it is here so we can change the leader of school finance expertise and then we want to make sure they have practiced it is that okay you guys good with that I think that's much wiser. Otherwise, you've just narrowed your pool. And having been a, yeah. a superintendent who went from uh, Illinois to Kansas to Wausau, I had a very solid understanding of budgeting and financing, but knew jack about the legislative laws until I got there. And where I went, I had solid expertise, and I'm a fast study and the first thing I did was immerse myself in course work through the um, school boards and administrators association to get up to speed pretty quickly so we would need to underscore that it's critically important but I wouldn't want it to be the the thing that didn't allow you to get all the other qualities you're looking for I respect right. it but yeah, I've done two states too. It's different, but 
we're really looking at the track record wherever they are right now. Are we okay with that? And then under uh, equity, we want to add uh, low income, so that is, is highlighted. Uh, remember, it's not limited to because that, are, that is not all the equity work. And your community was very emphatic about all the equity work, and we respect that. But we will add low income into that. We use low income in our equity work. We don't say, because that's direct. Okay, I would. I think that makes sense then. That's really what we're talking about. And then in the last, we want to. There was a comment about student center data driven. Yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. I just and, and I don't know. I just want somewhere in here that we're, we're talking about somebody who can balance the idea of making student-centered decisions, but when we're going to talk about um, bringing together achievement, black, uh, achievement gaps of our students of color and our white students, you cannot do that without really understanding data, right? You really have to be able to, to, to make decisions about achievement, about curriculum, about instruction, about all these things when you have the ability to look at data. And, and wrap it into your decision making. Um, and then, can I quick bring one other point oh, up, sure. real quick? Um, what is it? On the last slide, on the last slide, second from the bottom, a leader with knowledge of the history of Duluth ISD 709 and an understanding of the unique challenges and will reach out to marginalized populations. Um, I would love to have everything, plus, somehow a leader emerges out of our city somewhere with this great knowledge of the history of Duluth ISD 709, but is this, do we want to talk about a leader with the willingness to learn the history or some language like that so we're not saying, okay, they have to have this knowledge right now as they walk into this? Because I, I don't want to limit a pool. I want to make sure that our pool is expansive. And I agree that the history of our school district is exceedingly important to our future, but we, I think it's more that willingness to, to look at the history, learn from the history, and move forward. Does that make sense? Uh, it makes sense. What we are going to be looking at at candidates, if they haven't lived here, and that's fine, but they're going to do homework before they get to Kathleen and I. And that's something that's important to us. Because one of the questions I always ask candidates is, what do you know about Duluth? And I don't talk. Because we're interviewing them. So we want them to have done homework. You can do homework on this to figure out what's going on. In this day and age, if you can't go look at board minutes and look at the local newspaper, then and you know you get a you get an idea of the challenges facing and some of the history. Point taken. We don't we we, don't, we wouldn't make that restrictive, but it is important that the that the person has done their research on on ISD seven hundred nine before we talk to them. But thank you for your point. Now, the student center, just not to lose your point, which, you know, I'm, Kathleen and I are champions of student centered decision making. We have that connected to the humility because that's about making decisions that affect all kids with student centered. We can add the data into one of these two. Is that, is that okay? I don't, I don't, I Maybe we don't have to marry that language somewhere or, or put that language somewhere in here, but is there a way when we, I would like somehow to see in our process that we try to dig down onto that piece. Be because, right, you're getting to a level of superintendent. You should have some familiarity with making decisions with data. So I, I don't know if we need to, like, hammer it in here or if there's a way as we talk or we interview later on that we make sure to keep that piece in, our, in the front of our mind. Well, and, and I need a mic off. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, it was highlighted in one of the challenges, too, about providing resources for that very topic as it relates to data-driven. We have met, met with your data person and in the group, and, you know, we're informed your underserved community is, is in all data measures underserved. So point taken. Thank you. Um, then the the one the, and I again we're applauding you. The bullet point about board superintendent working together and an experience with positive working relationships with board. 
Is that what you're trying to say? I don't want to put words wordsmith you, but is that the message? Because it's a great message. Board superintendent working together and experience with a positive working relationship with the board. That will allow us to say, this board values that. Is that the, the statement? I'm not trying to wordsmith you guys. Please tell me how you want us to represent that. No, I was just wondering if I, I, yes, that's what I was responding to. That's why my light went on. Was about, I, can you say it one more time? And I'm screwing with the microphone. Yeah, I just jotted it down. So again, this is just totally trying to reflect it. Board superintendents working together and then, and experience with a positive working relationship. I really need your help to say how you want to say the value piece in the first part of that sentence. I can say we can find the experience of working with boards in a positive way. Is there something in there about a constructive working relationship instead? Do, I mean, again, from your experience, I don't write job descriptions. So sometimes I think if you hear positive working experience, you're going to hear all the sunshine and roses if people had a great board. Um, and I think the community wants us wants to know that we're in a position <coughs> where we want to have a positive working relationship, but we also call we challenge them right we challenge the superintendent so I wonder if there's just a different word rather than positive but I would defer to my colleagues on that because maybe I'm way overthinking this oh thanks uh, no I just have a very minute point in the one two three four fifth bullet point I think site you mean C-I-T-E -E. oh. it's, it's a typo okay Thank you. I, I had corrected it on a form, but I neglected to send it to him. Yeah, um, I don't know where it's kind of missing or if we could capture it with one of these bullets, but uh, the, air, the, the role of a superintendent to build relations, relationships slash uh, lobby slash um, with the media, with other districts, with politicians, with the community, but particularly the lobby kind of piece, which is a pretty key role of a superintendent in Minnesota and probably elsewhere, uh, and and has been a pretty important role um, in the last couple of years here in Duluth. So, how can we capture that? I'm guessing with the new bullet. Could we add it into the sixth bullet around communication? I think that's a really great point. Rosie and, and um, our leadership has been really effective um, and tenacious with um, lobbying and with working with legislators. So at the end of that, possibly saying a demonstrated success with lobbying for the school district legislators say what you said again demonstrated success with lobbying for the school district with local and state elected officials demonstrated success in lobbying and relationship building I, I, maybe we with lobbying for the district yeah yeah for the district Through relationships with, with state elected officials. Mm -hmm. Got it. Good point. Thank you. That's why your voice is so important because not we can't capture everything, and not everything's going to come up in the right. your stakeholder groups. They have interests, valid and respectful interests, but you guys have a different uh, perspective. So thank you, and I'll put that up there at the back end of that. Okay, I do want to go back to your statement to your next superintendent because that's still a hanging chad right now. 
I've got a suggestion. Um, something along the lines of a proven track record of positive construction working relationships with all board members. Does that make sense? Or with the board? Can you say that again, please? A proven track record of positive constructive working relationships with all board members. But what message do you want to, I can do that part. What message do you guys want to send? Yeah. That's where I'm having difficulty, like, wordsmithing the language because I don't want it to look like we're putting it on the superintendent to build the relationship, but how do we make it that this is partnership? Part, well, that's the word, is partnership. A member of a team? Partnership. Can I jump in here? I, I, I went through 11 thinking that, you know, is there a way to get rid of one of these? You know, I'm just thinking, gosh, we're just, it's getting kind of long, and is there a way to shorten it up? Exactly. Or, and and it, it gets cumbersome, start adding more. And, and I think, aren't we talking about something that's almost a given? I mean, that's, that's a superintendent, that's part of their job to work with the board. Um, and, it, and it's kind of outlined in a number of these other uh, bullets uh, that we're talking about, isn't it? What we can do is um, we're looking at the qualities specific to the superintendent. However, when we put the posting in, we can add exactly what you were saying. The uh, Board of Education of you know, the Duluth School District has a strong interest in working collaboratively with the new superintendent, blah, 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 blah. So we can include it in the introduction if you would prefer not to add it as a bullet point. That's what, yeah, I, I, I would suggest that, that that's a great point, Paul, is that let's not put it as a bullet point. Let's put it in the introduction as to frame. This right. is our introduction. We're going to frame it as a collaborative effort with the board. This is what we're looking for from the superintendent. If I, I think. Because it'll go, we'll yeah. amend the posting so we can get your interest of having that message communicated in there but not necessarily have to lengthen the specific qualities you're looking for we can spell that out very clearly yeah could we simply add something about um, you know again I'm not trying to wordsmith it but just even that we look forward to working in partnership with the superintendent yes. The, the Board of Education and that and just so because I think that's really the underlining message we want I think yeah I think writing something as the introduction sets the stage for the reader so I think that's a great idea we can we can definitely do that good idea but not to lose your your point yes though that's the person we're looking for that has a track record I was looking to say, what do you guys want to say to them, as opposed to the other way around? And this this matches that. The Duluth ISD <clears throat> 709 board is looking forward to working in partnership with the next superintendent. Is that did I capture your point? I was just trying to capture what I think I was hearing from what I think I was hearing from people in one or two words. <laughs> That's so, what I, yeah, yeah. did I capture? So, so I think you did, but okay. I won't speak on behalf of the board. The Duluth ISD 709 board is looking forward to working in partnership with the next superintendent in the job description. Can we say something like seeks to employ a superintendent? S something that's more about instead of like looking forward to it, you know, like. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. <laughs> I know, I'm just. <laughs> it sounds like a great, like, come to my clam bake. Um, no, uh, <laughs> but something that's a little bit stronger around, um, around the partnership. I lost my wording when I thought about yeah. the clam bake, so <laughs> maybe you have something, member eater. Member eater? I just, because. Um, two things. First thing is I I want to make sure that we're going to be asking um, uh, for a heavy lift from the next soup. So I want to make sure that we are putting it out there that we are ready to do the lifting with the superintendent. Right? Like this is not just 
fix it or you know and then the second thing I want to say is I, I would like to just be on record is that I realize at times um, we have a tendency to be like whew what kind of fool would ever want to take this job with all of our problems and all of our horrible things um, we're an amazing district we have more success I think than we do failure and I truly believe out of a lot of tension that we have in our district a tremendous amount of creative solutions have bubbled out of that and so when we're looking for in that next leader is somebody who can embrace the tension that is inherent to our district and that we take ownership of and that allows for that creative solution to bubble out of the tension, take it, embrace it, and then run forward to the benefit of our district. So, there. You know, and, whoops, sorry. I, and, and on that same vein, and, and, and I guess, um, <coughs> I think this particular board does uh, see a lot of successes in our district that have happened over the years. And, uh, and, and you said it in lots of different ways there, uh, Member Eater, but I think that, uh, to me, that's also why I, I thought some of the comments maybe from the school board um, would be important for someone uh, who's looking at our district to see that we did have some celebrations, I'm, I'm going to assume, in some of our interview conversations with you and, and that, um, that I think hopefully would send a message that we're a board that is proud of being on this board uh, and, and, and putting the time and energy into it. So I don't know how that fits in with, with uh, the opening statements, but um, I, I think I, I'm, I'm going to suspect hopefully it was captured in some of the interviews that you did with us. So. Can I ask you a clarifying question, uh, Member Lofold, can I just, about, uh, as you put this together, we've had lots of conversation now, you'll get out another draft for us to <laughs> review. Of, okay. Of the profile? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, I was just wondering if we needed a motion to approve what we've developed or if we're ready to move we forward or what we, next steps are. It, we, can, we don't need a formal this is not a committee uh, school of official, but we do, w I think we want as a board to give our consultants the okay as a group to go forward to put this leadership profile on our, um, on the application process page. Um, th they'll take the tweaks and if they, you know, can send that out, you know, ASAP so that I don't know. Do you, do you, as a board, do you think it's um, it's imperative that I give them another go ahead, or are we are we assured that if they they Nick has gone through and reiter, re, reiterated what we wanted, he has read that back to us. So I think we're going to say um, that we're going to trust that, that we move forward. That, that with the tweaks we've given you, that's our leadership profile. So go forward and post without having to come back and get an okay from me? Big thumbs up. I don't know. I guess I would like you and Alana, since you're working with them, to at least look at it before it goes out there. You know, I think we've, in another situation, have dealt with something that didn't get seen by the board before it went up there, if you know what I'm talking about. I just, I, and I think it would be good for, you know, we're there, we're there, and it just, you're going to see it and say, yep, that's what we wanted. That's or that's that 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 is what we talked about. You know, instead and of sitting around here and going through it all over it, again, because I want the whole board to see it tomorrow morning and you know respond back with yes, because I I I too feel like if if that isn't something we want to do, I mean, there was a part today too that I wish I could have talked to the whole board about whether you wanted the board's um, information in this packet. We always knew you were going to get it. I just didn't know if they wanted it in this packet. And so, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll do whatever I, you want. I would be afraid that that would be an, a meeting 
to um, because we would be making a board decision, and so it would have to be a meeting, and it would have to have you know a three-day posting. And I got an and, idea. And, yeah. We have an idea. How about I go type it right there, and we'll be done by six, and it's done. How's that grab you? <laughs> I mean, you're all here. Your time is yeah. valuable. But we can't vote on it now. It's not a vote. It's only like a right. Okay. You can take a look at, you know, it's, it's not that many changes. We can get it done right now, and you can provide consensus to move forward. And that way you don't have to worry. And was there consensus? I thought I saw that you all wanted your the board information. So while he's working on that, All of the documents that are before you, we sent to her to put on board books so that there is no question of what the information is or isn't. Member Lovell, well, I have a question. Do we have a list, not necessarily of the names, but of the number of people who are in these stakeholder groups? I mean, for example, I don't know. Yeah, were they signed in? I, I, am, I just have to get the, the sign-in sheets. I have half of them, and then I will, I will send out not the names of who participated, yeah, but I the mean, numbers. Yeah. Um, some of the groups in, that were at Denfeld, um, we didn't have them sign in. So and that was a that was a conscious choice between me and Cheryl Lofald. So um, mostly because we'll just say that there was a significant number of staff, an average number of staff. I we could defer to Kathleen and Nick to for their estimates of how many people were in their rooms. Uh, Nick knows specifically how many people were in the last session. Okay, great. Nick, yeah, I was think there was 30? thirty. I, th I believe it was thirty. It was yeah. thirty. Thirty. We know there was thirty community members for the open, um, the open community walk-in group time so and but there was almost everybody that RFCP showed up so it was it was a very well attended uh, member Kirby it would I think most of our stakeholder groups were between 12 and 17 and then the afternoon sessions with the um, teachers and principals probably more near 20 20 to 25 we were throwing out an estimate because while I was top talking and or presenting and vice versa, we had some people wander in and I didn't stop and start writing down the numbers, which is why we had an estimate, but I knew you were having people sign in, so... Um, is there a Wi-Fi code? <laughs> okay, if I can walk through it. I'm going to go through in the first edits. School, school district is highlighted to add to that point to make it clearer. Finance expertise. Got a multitask here of balancing this microphone. We have site work, as, uh, excuse me, I had it corrected and took it back. Site, C I T E, thank you. you. Must talk a little English in your day. And low income. 
Okay? And then, this is a long one, but it's a good one. Starts with, and demonstrated success with lobbying for the district, the relationship building with local and state elected officials. Is that a bullet? No. It's part of this one. I would agree with that. Okay, how would you like it to look? Just, I think it's just end at conversations and start at demonstrated success. How's that? Okay, cool. That's okay. Yeah, you're right, Paul. Let's keep it under 15. Well, we talked about that. There's some that have 13. Now, but that's okay. Yeah. It doesn't. They can make a good point. Okay, and then. Uh, the um, statement in the intro. Sure. Here's an idea. Let's see if I grab this. Help me, I, I added the seeking. See what you guys think. I have no editorial um, connection to that, so change it as you see fit. I just leave out the with them. I would just say yeah. partnership to lead the district. And then we'll talk about your disregard for Oxford commas later. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is an English teacher. I'll trade you seats for a while. <laughs> um. We're all in this together, guys. <laughs> Chair Lovell, if I may, um, I would love to ask our, our student representative any of her feelings about any of this. Since, since she's here and is attending and, and is shyly sitting in the corner, and so I just want to make sure that, that um, we're capturing what you feel is best um, from the students that you participated with yesterday. Um, I think everything that you guys brought up um, matched with everything that I was concerned about in it. Um, so there isn't anything extra that I would want to add, and I agree with all the changes that we made. Okay. And then uh, you just wanted to highlight the data driven. We didn't need, to, need to, yeah. Got it. Student centered's in there. I think that's it, gang. Anything you. And then, uh, how would the chair like to just sh send the, you've seen it, but I'll put it in one, I'll just put this in one doc, Perfect. Word doc. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll save it. Well, there's, there's this um, 
the next PowerPoint? Are you going to just, is that just for our information, the plan next steps? No. Or do you want, you, you, I, we want to cover that a little bit? Yes. But I thought that was a good pause, and then we want to close on this because I don't want to get distracted by that. Yep, I, I'm good. I mean, yeah, I'm like, I like that we did that, and I just didn't yeah. want to, um, I didn't want the board to get anxious about packing up and leaving quite yet, I, although I know some of us have other um, appointments. But I think we're, we want to look at this next PowerPoint and. Um, just a slide. No more. Yep. Yep. Uh, we just wanted to go back to that calendar to make sure that we're on the same page. We're here tonight, twenty eighth. Um, we're going to start screening candidates. We we we've, we've already started to target candidates and talk with them. Start screening them through March. We'd like to get back up here and present a slate around mid March, at ninth to thirteenth ballpark that will prompt you to do interviews first and second goal being get your new superintendent appointed by the beginning of April ish and again please be aware that this is a uh, plan not all plans are perfect because we've got to get candidates in you guys in so this is the plan that we submitted and where we're headed do you think that um your application process on some of the so uh, on some of the websites says that the application process is closing February fourteenth. Is that true? It's supposed to. Okay. So you, so now you're going to add this leadership profile to the application, and is it already posted on all of those sites we approved the last time we were there here together? It is absolutely supposed to be. I know that. I um it. I forwarded to you, I think, the posting on AASA. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Is that the only posting we've got? No, no, no. Okay. You did it on three other sites. I will um, send those postings to you if I'm allowed to do that. Okay. Usually, see, we can't necessarily get on those sites, but our um, office can, so we can um, have them do that. They have... They have um, the, the connection and yeah. the permissions and they um, submit the fees and then you <coughs> reimburse us. So they have to do that. But AASA, I received that, so I know that's up. But we'll, I'll make sure you get those. Can I follow up with that? So if you look at March 9th to the 13th, would it be unrealistic for the board to do a quick... I would we would do a quick poll for the date in that week that works for us and you you will work on that date or do we kind of have to wait to see we would like to be able to poll our school board and say in the week of March 9th to the 13th what's the best date for us to work is that something we can go ahead and do and then I think we would tell you within yeah. the next week. No, I think you need to do that. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Is that the same, do you think, with the other, like the week of 16th to the 20th, is to actually um, poll our, our board, see what date in that week is the first round of interviews? So in the week of 16th through 20, or is that too far out yet? No, I would, suggest, I would suggest that you set up all of your dates. The sooner, the better. And in terms of first round of interviews, um, I would suggest you pick two dates, because to do um, all of them in one day, I don't think it's a good idea. Okay. And then with the um, uh, second round of interviews, which will be your finalists, you'll do one on one day, because we haven't laid out specifically what process you're going to use if you're going to engage other people. And going back to the week we provide the slate to you, that's the time when we will um, provide to you an overview of the legalities of what you may or may not ask. We will provide samples to you of potential questions that meet the qualities that you have a rubric that will help you all be able to interpret how does this person, you know, rate a four. You don't want it to be differently. You want to have um, uh, 
reliable responses, um, I would um, be having you begin <coughs> taking a look at um, what um, your superintendent contract may be for the next person. We can provide you input, but I think it would be helpful to receive an overview and guidance of what you currently have in a contract, um, how that compares you know, to large districts, which I would have a feeling um, your uh, business, uh, your CFO HR. and and HR person would know, be gathering that information. And uh, after those meetings, um, early or late, I don't know. Um, my only question was, um, is have you had any interest um, of, of people that do intend to apply yet or know of anybody that has applied? We, we can both respond. Um, yes. Um, I can tell you that um, the key interest was waiting to see how those qualities already flushed out. I already had some questions because some individuals had already been doing their research. And um, I know um, that we have already reached out to a few people to be sure to take a look when more specifics came out, which would be coming up um, shortly. I know I spoke to somebody, not somebody, several people. Um, we've spoken to a um, professor at the University of Minnesota who has connections. <coughs> we've um, spoken uh, to uh, some of your longest seated superintendents in the state and asked specifically who are some shining stars. Do you know Duluth? Yes. I vacation there every summer. Um, we've, we've had lots of discussions and there is an interest and um, I think both of us, Nick can speak for himself, I've suggested that they <coughs> um, do some exploring um, about the district in advance. It would serve them well and to keep a, a lookout on, and I named the sites. Uh, we also, I wanted to mention, and we didn't mention this in every group where we were, including you, we said if there are people um, that you would like to nominate that you think or that we should reach out to and explore, um, we have done that and we've received some um, responses, some positive, some not, but um, yeah, there's, there's some activities and rumblings going on. Nick? I just want to draw attention that, the, reiterate, yeah, grab the dates. We'll be here that 9th or 13th to go over everything that Kathleen said. But first and second round, just to remind, we won't be here for that. We're here to help, guide, anything we can do. But all those things we do in that 9th or 13th meeting will set the table but obviously be here throughout the process through anything we can do to assist you to figuratively slip the ring on your next superintendent in partnership to lead your district. Yeah, just uh, back to the calendar, a, a couple things about March. Um, thank you, Member Oswell, for mentioning the 9th and 10th are our current Education and HR Committee. Uh, March 3rd is the Minnesota primary for president, so we can't hold meetings after a certain uh, time, so that date would probably be out. And then I would hope that uh, the 18th and 19th is when many of us generally go down to the Duluth-St. Louis County days. Um, it's a pretty key lobby uh, annual event uh, that school board members are, are, are doing, so we do, we might need to strike those dates out, and I just wanted to put it on people's calendars as well, the 18th and the 19th of March. And then our regular school board meeting is the 17th of that week. Thank you. Um, since we're talking calendars, um, also the week of March 23rd through the 27th, when we bring in second rounds, maybe if you want to block it out on families' calendars too, because I know Kathleen talked about this, and when we do recruitment for providers, we like to have their spouses or partners or whatever um, 
experience the community as well. So maybe if you have <coughs> willing or not so willing people who live under your household, under your roof, who would like to participate in that. Um, are we still on track for what we're looking? I know that this is pretty close to what we had agreed upon when we first engaged with you, but are we still on track in terms of it hitting that kind of sweet spot time window that you all had spoken about in terms of attracting strong candidates? Yes, we are. Just in closing then, um, I just want to thank um, Nick and Kathleen again for um, all that you've provided us, all the leadership, all the insights, um, and the graciousness uh, of your, your coming and your presentations with our community. I think they really um, just really felt listened to, they felt appreciated and supported, and I think that um, BWP can be proud of the, the the, the connections, the partnerships that we have with you and, and that we welcome you in northern Minnesota. And that being said to board members, I'd really like to reach out to you. I think that um, the, the stakeholders that were here yesterday could, I think it would go a long way if we make thank yous, personal thank yous to them. So I will be um, sending out a message to you via Melinda and um, the thank you cards um, I can probably bring tomorrow to a, a meeting we have tomorrow, and um, if you can pick out, you know, we'll just we'll just divide it up. But I think our people that came yesterday, it would go a long way to our relationships with them if we thank them because they were, you know, there was some really well, they were all very wonderful to give their time. So thank you. And if we might, we would like to thank you and the cooperation of your community, um, internal and external stakeholders. It was, Kathleen and I had, it was a joy yeah, to I spend time and the hospitality, so we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Honestly, most of And you will be back with us the week of March 9th through 13th, somewhere in that week. Can you tell us yep. Okay. <laughs> Member Lofald, or Chair Lofald, I'd just like to say that um, in, in the signing of the cards, I would appreciate if we all could sign the cards. Um, if we just get a bunch and all sit around and just sign them, be, um, because it, it really is a group effort, and just because some of us know them, it, you know, it's not that we all don't appreciate them. And I also want to say thank you to being here. It was a joy driving you guys around, and and I was most it was most fun showing you Central High School. And we went up to Central, so um, we we have somebody else that can can tout how beautiful it is up there. <laughs> um, and. <laughs> and um, it, that the only feedback I got from people walking out is I kept asking, was it worth your time? Was it worth your time? And they were, were very pleased with being felt being heard, being listened to, and their only their only um, reluctance was what's going to happen with what we said. And so I think that's that's where it's our responsibility to take it on and really value that we that we cite what they say and in our decision making and make sure that they know that they've been heard and you guys have been great facilitators on on getting that information to us so thank you